Hello, everyone. So for those of you who are watching, my name is Anthony Labarc. I am currently a biomedical science teacher at Laurel High School. And I decided to do my report on childhood myopia. So um, this holds near and dear to me as well, um, particularly because I've had vision problems throughout the years. And I really didn't understand my vision problems or I wasn't able to tell that there was a problem with my vision until I was having troubles at lectures and things like that with my visions when I was trying to look at the board or use specific technology. So let's just go ahead and get started. Um, so um, I just want to define myopia at first and uh, before I actually go into, you know, um, why I'm talking about myopia, uh, what are the concerns and what I was targeting, um, what are, were some of my main questions? So myopia is nearsightedness. Um, so it means you see things close that are kind of blurry. So this, um, I got it from the American Ophthalmology Association, uh, nearsightedness or myopia, um, as it is uh, medically termed, is a vision condition in which people can see close objects clearly, but objects farther away appear blurred. So um, myopia pretty much means that you're okay, you can take your glasses off. And that's my case as well, I can take my glasses off. But particularly things that are farther away, um, you have trouble seeing. So this image below, um, we have some, you know, just an image of some children. So if you see like mild myopia, um, they can see this, you know, this close, very clearly moderate myopia, even things this close, they still have somewhat of a blurry vision and high rates of myopia. You see that it's very fuzzy, very blurry, very difficult to see. So what actually causes myopia? So, um, what causes myopia, uh, myopia is an irregular shape of the eye. So the eye is um, oblong. It can be something called astigmatism, which I particularly have. So either the eye grows too long or the cornea has an exaggerated curvature. So I want to talk about the anatomy of the eye um, just in brevity um, so we can understand, you know, what um, in addition to what causes myopia, what is the physiological response? response um, to this condition. So on um, the first um, image, you can see um, the, uh, the eye, you see the light coming in, right? So our, our, our um, eyes actually respond to different wavelengths of light. And where they respond, um, it enters through the cornea. And then in the back of the eye, there's something called the retina. And in humans and many other animals, we have what are called cones and rods that detect um, certain amounts of light and certain wavelengths of light. So it's really important that that light can actually be focused and be triggering those cones and rods in the retina, uh, in the retina. Therefore, it can send a response to the brain and it can tell the brain, okay, there's light coming in, there's different wavelengths, let's interpret this and formulate a response. However, if the eye grows too long or the cornea it has an exaggerated curvature, then that light and those wavelengths of light aren't going to efficiently make it to the retina. Uh, to the retina. So under normal conditions, um, under this shorter distance of light, it's gonna make it to the retina just fine. It's gonna fire off those neurons uh, from that optic nerve and send these signals to your brain. However, in nearsightedness, uh, individuals with myopia, this isn't gonna be happening at a normal rate or a normal intensity. So why do children develop myopia? And I'm gonna go into this um, you know, more in depth and provide evidence, research-based evidence and things like that. But it, the general consensus is these three main factors. So increased screen time, um, genetics, and less time spent outdoors. And my particular focus is going to more so be on increased screen time. And this is a reason why I chose this topic is because with the pandemic and this era of um, reliance and dependability on technology, there hasn't been, a, you know, a greater time to really focus on this. 
um, in essence, to increase screen time, it's inevitable, right? Children are younger and they're developing habits of being dependent on screens. And especially in education, which we're concerned with in this course, obviously, um, it's going to run into issues with increased screen time. So with that being said, um, myopia is actually on the rise. So the prevalence of myopia um, and high myopia are increasing globa globa uh, sorry, globally at an alarming rate with significant increases in the risk of vision impairment. And this is from a website called mymyopia.com. Really good resource for um, you know, anything myopia if you wanna check it out. So just some basic statistics that I don't, just wanna throw out there before I went in. So. Um, one in four parents have a child with myopia, and this has increased um, significantly, and I'll show you in other studies since the 1980s um, when they really started tracking this. Um, so in U.S. children, myopia has actually doubled from 20% to 40% in, um, from 1990 to 2010, and this kind of makes sense with the technological shift, the internet really coming into use from the everyday home user um, in the 1990s and beyond. And then 50% of the world's population will be my uh, optic by 2050. So of course, this is an extrapolation, um, but this is kind of alarming that half the population is gonna have these issues with vision. And so the reason I chose this topic and it really, you know, invigorated my curiosity when we were going over invisible disabilities, because I would class this as an invisible disability. So especially with myself, um, I wasn't diagnosed with myopia until um, an older age, until I was like 25. So obviously with time, my eyes were probably degenerating, but still when I was younger, it wasn't like I had, you know, annual eye screenings or um, my school didn't provide this. Um, it wasn't diagnosed at an early age when there were probably worse signs, um, even though I didn't really catch on to it until um, I was more mature and I was focusing on these sorts of issues. So what, are, what were my questions going into this research study? So the questions I had was, is there a correlation between increased screen time and childhood myopia? And how can we improve methods to prevent, diagnose, and accommodate children who suffer from myopia? So I wanted to see this correlation, and then I kind of wanted to put this research together to see, you know, what are some, or if any, um, of the solutions that have been presented, or what are some solutions that I could have inferred just from digging a little bit deeper and um, scratching beyond the surface in terms of research. So this research-based evidence, I'm going to go through some of the findings of some uh, primary research articles. So the association between digital screen time and myopia, a systematic review. This is a great article. Reviews are awesome because they kind of are a conglomerate of many facets of research, many research articles. Um, so it, it packs a lot of punch in one article. Um, smartphone use is a possible risk factor for myopia. Uh, the relationship between screen time and outdoor time with rates of myopia in Spanish children. I thought this was particularly interesting because one of the main factors that has been correlated to increased myopia is decreased outdoor time. <laughs> and then I also just had some other supporting um, resources, the American Optometric um, Association, and myopia, which I had already previously mentioned. So the first article that I wanted to review is the association between digital screen time and myopia, a systematic review. Um, this is by um, Lansa et al. 2020. So it's a uh, it's a relatively new study. Um, and the targeted question was, is there an association between screen time and the risk of developing myopia or the risk of myopia progression in children? So is this, you know, developing, um, you know, is this a new development or is it getting worse? So um, this was a, a review of 15 different studies with a total of 49,789 children aged between three and 19 years old. So you can see um, all these children um, 
most of them are uh, most of the age range is going to be within adolescence um, and it's close to 50,000 subjects. So even though this was a voluntary response sample, um, this is a really good um, sample database uh, to go off with. This is a very robust study around 50,000 children. So I just uh, I wanted to summarize the article. Um, just based on this graphic that they put. I thought this was really clever and really good. So it shows a timeline of um, myopia pre prevalence on the rise. So this is around the 1980s. So this is before the use of home computers, but this is the age of disco with all these you know crazy flashing lights and arcade games and things like that so take that into consideration and then it takes you through time as technology increases so 1990s we have computer use of the world wide web um, we started seeing these computers in our home uh, 2007 was the first smartphone um, smartphone penetration so you know people with smartphones in their hands beyond 22 percent um and then 2015 this is progressing um you know the um, technology video games things like that um so smartphone use in 2017 more than one to two hours per day and then the smartphone penetration where there's more than 37 percent of the population including our youth uh, with a smartphone in their hands so um, this study was also looking not just at smartphones, this is showing smartphones, but it looked at tablets, things like that as well. So um, out of the 15 studies, there was a positive correlation in seven of these studies um, indicating that increased digital screen time um, was actually had a correlation with myopia. So again, uh, core, the first rule of statistics, correlation doesn't imply causation. However, um, with these studies and this robust amount of data, it is a pretty clear indication that um, myopia is on the rise and it probably has to do something with the amount of screen time. So this overall review shows us these overarching um, you know, ideals that increase screen time equals increased myopia. And we're seeing that um, as a whole worldwide, which is pretty interesting. Uh, the next article I looked at was the relationship between screen and outdoor time with rates of myopia in Spanish children. So again, this wasn't a worldwide study. It was a more specific study. It was conducted in Spain um, in the years 2016, 2017, and 2019. Um, it had a robust, uh, not as robust as the review, obviously, because it was a conglomerate of many studies, but this study had around 7,500 children, 7,497 children to be exact. Um, and the targeted questions were, do children with myopia have increased screen time and decreased outdoor time compared to normal children? So how they did this was um, they did this in schools across Spain, and they basically um, it was a voluntary response sample as well. So there's it's down, uh, you know, downfalls to structuring a study like that, statistically speaking. However, um, they uh, they interviewed them um, on a you know uh, they actually did these interviews in early September of the school years but it was a longitudinal study so that was interesting as well they were able to see if there was a progression in uh, this myopia with these children especially with you know increased screen use and decrease outdoor time uh, between these years and the ages of these children were five to seven. So um, the other study was a little bit of a um, larger um, uh, age range. This is more selective. So all the main findings had a p-value um, that was less than 0 0.05, um, the, uh, the threshold of significance. Um, so, and basically what they found was increased use of digital devices was positively correlated with increased rates of myopia. So they found a statistical correlation between these two variables. Um, they also showed in this longitudinal study that rates of myopia are actually increasing over time. So just in the short time frame, three years, 2016, 2017, 2019, where they collected data, um, it shows that there's actually more children um, gaining um, difficulties, uh, not gaining, um, losing ability to see their, uh, you know, from uh, far away, um, having onset myopia. 
Um, and children who reported spending more time outdoors were actually less likely to develop myopia. And this goes back to one of the main reasons um, of, um, you know, um, increased rates of myopia was less time spent outdoors. And this is because um, there's uh, evidence that shows that, you know, having exposure to sunlight and things like that is crucial for the development of young children's eyes. So the last um, peer reviewed article I wanted to look at, this was strictly with smartphones. And I was, you know, when I was going to this study, I was more interested in just educational technology as a whole. However, with the smartphones, um, everybody has a smartphone in their pocket, in their hands. Um, it's a constant issue with combating students trying to use their smartphones in class and things like that. So I think it's super important to look at and super relevant. So smartphone use as a possible risk factor for myopia, the target question was, is there an association between myopia and smartphone data usage? So this was a study that actually was looking um, at um, a wide range of individuals, including adults, not just adolescents. But I thought this was interesting and I wanted to add this, especially because it was tailored towards the educational system. So they um, did comparisons. These are box and whisker plots of um, comparisons. Um, these are um, daily usage and daily time spent on a phone. Um, these are all uh, voluntary response samples, self-report. So just be aware of the pitfalls of those in statistical analyses. So they compared um, different groups, uh, primary schooling, secondary schooling, and university level schooling. So, and daily usage of smartphone data and daily um, self-reported smartphone data usage, um, according to uh, both myopic and non-myopic participants. So, um, they you know, they assessed and they diagnosed people with myopia and without myopia, and they were comparing, you know, how much are these people using the phones or, the, uh, um, or you know, their smartphones? Is there a difference? And um, they use man whitney U testing to, um, to figure out the differences. Basically, this is like an ANOVA but um, ANOVAs are gonna be working with normally distributed data. Men, Whitney, U tests are gonna be working with non-normally distributed data. And they used a p-value of 0.02. Um, so it's actually a lower threshold than um, most um, studies are gonna be using of 0.05. So I think that's an even more clear indication that there was a significant difference found in daily data usage between myopic and non-myopic university students. Um, and so this was particularly the university students. So later in uh, later years, so this can indicate different progressions. And there was um, not um, significant correlation. Um, uh, well, this was sorry, um, this was for the daily data usage. This was just for university. However, in daily time on the phone between myopic and non-myopic primary students, there was a significant correlation. So it's kind of interesting that it's showing the university level, which is the higher end of the spectrum in age-wise and the lower end of the spectrum. It's showing indication that smartphone use may be a possible risk factor for myopia. Again, with all these studies, correlation doesn't apply causation, but as you can see between the review and these recent studies, um, it's, you know, it's kind of alarming seeing these trends come up over and over again. Is this an issue um, of the smartphone use? I think um, we're starting to produce a theory on this and we can say, yes, it is having something to do with it. So um, the overall conclusions that I was able to gather um, there is a surrounding um, amount of evidence that rates of myopia are increasing as use of digital devices are increasing, um, especially, you know, um, not with just these individual studies, but the longitudinal study, like the one that was conducted in Spain with over 7,500 students, and the one um, that was a systematic review with over 50,000 subjects from 15 different studies showing that from 1980 to current time, 2021, there is increased prevalence of myopia. Also, um, 
this is, you know, this subject is particularly concerning considering that children are immersed with technology, especially, you know, with the pandemic happening and us being forced to teach on Zoom. It just kind of pushed this over a cliff. So my main concern, um, you know, focusing on the aspect of special education is, is this really focused on right now? I know that, um, you know, I have a lot of experiences with IEPs and 504 plans and things like this, but I've never really seen particular attention on um, the issue of vision of myopia and figuring out because there's some students that may not even be able to see the front uh, of the board. They may be struggling with this. Um, maybe getting headaches, um, maybe, you know, producing onset anxiety. Um, it's making it more difficult to do their work, but they're not even properly represented. Um, and that's just, you know, that's kind of alarming to me, especially coming from someone who has, um, you know, um, in his older age, found out that he was myopic. So what are some of the solutions? Um, they talked about this in some of the articles, some of these aspects, and I came up with some of the aspects of my own. But um, I think uh, one of the key ones, limiting technology use for children. So I wholeheartedly agree that there should be a certain age where you're not sticking a phone or a tablet in front of a young child's face, especially when your eyes are developing. So I don't know if it needs to be mandated um, by law, you know, at the state level, or just recommendations by the CDC, or, you know, and if it just starts, you know, at the point that parents make their own decision, but when you get into primary school, they're not really using this technology until they start to hit puberty or in a sense where their eyes are completely developed. Um, so that could be a political conversation for another time. Um, I think there should be increased access to free eye examination regularly. So I know when I was a child um, and not everybody has insurance, uh, great insurance or gets their eyes checked regularly, but I think it should be, you know, every at least twice, three times a year, especially during child's development. Um, they should have, you know, opportunities where it just happens right at the school. Maybe they pull them in class, maybe they come to their class, but there's going to be a free um, eye examination. So we have more uh, regularly diagnosed cases. So I think um, we need to provide accommodations such as preferential seating for children with myopia. So I think this needs to be focused on, um, you know, taken into account uh, in IEPs and 504 plans. I have never really seen, you know, any um, legislation or concern about vision, right? So um, getting that diagnosed and making sure there's the proper accommodations for students that are struggling with myopia. So um, I think we should um, make it an, an, uh, an objective to provide proper nutrition to promote eye health. So I know in the early 2000s, you know, there was a big push for um, health, um, you know, nutritional value in school, taking soda machines out of schools, things like that. But I think the research needs to be done. Everybody knows, you know, eating things like beta carotene, which carrots are high in beta carotene, um, can um, increase the longevity and um, rigor of your eyesight. So taking that into consideration, right? Providing options. So increase opportunity for outdoor activity. I think this is a big one especially because it's a biological fact that um, being outdoors and having regular um, exposure to sunlight, just not, not just for eye development, but it's key for um, synthesizing vitamin D, um, which is gonna uh, promote the growth of healthy collagen, uh, which is a protein that provides all the connectivity um, of your connective tissues in, your, um, in the human body system. Um, so I think, you know, at a certain point, they're like, they give students recess, but then beyond that point, the students aren't going outside unless it's like, you know, a special field trip or um, a fire drill or, you know, something in a gym class or if they're in sports or something like that. But I think there needs to be increased opportunity for outdoor activity, um, even for students uh, of an older age, like in, that are in secondary education. 
And the last one, I think there should be availability for genetic screening to better understand risks of myopia. So now we're uh, moving into this stage of technology and that includes things like DNA sequencing. So we can use this technology to understand the, pre, the, the genetic predispositions for you know, students that are at a higher risk for myopia. So if we have this technology available to students at a young age, um, DNA sequencing and things like this, we can learn to, you know, begin to understand the students that are a higher risk base for myopia and um, start to give them preventative treatment instead of having to give them therapeutic treatment later in life, we can maybe prevent, uh, prevent some of these issues. So that's all I have. Um, these are my references. It's all of the articles and these websites. Um, these websites uh, provide uh, very good information um, that's in layman's terms and plenty of resources if you want to learn more about this. Um, but for those of you who have seen this, uh, thanks for watching. This has been an enjoyable course, and hopefully we will meet again in the near future. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Take care.